Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden right here. Often around projects, you're brought in and the code is just not testable or it has no unit test. The project's been going on for a long time. Some things work, some things don't. If they don't, nobody knows why. And your job is to say, look, I've heard about this thing called unit testing. I hear it helps. There's some kind of science that shows that it helps. What can I do to improve things? First thing you need to do with unit testing is to confirm initial states. So you don't really touch the initial code. What you do is you confirm the initial states, right? Without touching the code, you just write some unit tests on the side and say, this is what I know. Then you make some changes. Then you show that unit tests fixed them. If you don't have this initial state, this most important part, when you go around and change things, you have no proof that the new bugs are not yours. The old bugs that you fixed weren't there in the first place. So you gotta confirm the initial conditions, exposing how the code works, boot up the program. What is the initial state? What are the variables set to by default? What do the classes look like? What values do they have? What is the configuration? This is how the code works today without me touching it. This has nothing to do with me. This has to do with your code, right? You're not accepting responsibility for something that's already messed up. So we're gonna pick a class that's really messed up, make ourselves a nice safe environment to test things in isolation without affecting the original code because we're part of the solution, not part of the problem problem. So let's dive in. You've been given some code that you're told that sometimes works and that's really all they say. So you're expected to somehow fix the bugs even though you don't know what the bugs are. Never seen this code. Your first step is to do recon. You need to read the code. Don't touch it. Just read it. See what's going down. Do your best to get an understanding. Feel comfortable with the lay of the land. You're going to have to export something to test it. They tell you that the code doesn't work sometimes. That's not good enough. We need to know exactly what we're dealing with. And the only way to do with it is run the code through a series of unit tests to confirm what it is without even touching it or modifying how it works at all. So we're going to leave it as is. The only thing we're going to change is expose that person variable up there. So we're going to make a simple getter that just exposes it, right? And we're going to put this all in one line so we don't freak out anybody who's looking at this from a coding perspective, hey, look, we only changed two lines. We added at the very bottom, didn't call your functions, didn't mess with your stuff. We're just doing it to expose it. We looked in here, there's no unit test. We added one. We added a package JSON with a unit test, Mocha and Chai in there. We've got a basic one in there so we can do NPM test, verify that our Mocha works. So let's import that thing that we just exported here, the get person. And let's confirm the initial conditions so we know what we're dealing with here, okay? So we'll describe the index initial conditions. So this is what the code is today. All this unit test is gonna do is surface and confirm or deny what those initial conditions are. We are not modifying the code, we're just using these unit tests to explore what the heck is going on. So the initial person is an object, we guess. It's a class, which is a type of object. So let's just verify it even works. He says the person sometimes works. Maybe it's not an object. I don't know. It is object. So let's get that person from the getter that we exposed. Since they didn't expose functions, we have to create our own to scoop things out of it. And we'll say the is object person should be true. So it, it is an object, right? Like something works in this code base. You claim the person works. Okay, you know that what the client told us was that, or the developer, that the person sometimes works. We know now that if we run this a bunch of times, it always seems to work. So the person always is created. It might not be created the way they want. One fact they mentioned was that sometimes the armor bonus doesn't seem to work. So let's see if we can, without touching anything, just read the code and see what's going on. So they set the equipment and then they immediately call this calculate, which does that whole loop thing and says, all right, if anything in this list of equipment is an armor piece, let's go ahead and add that to our armor bonus. But then he somehow resets it to zero. I think this was an accident. Let's just confirm that the armor bonus is zero. You and I know that based on this logic, it looks like they're adding the bonus and they've added leather armor here in the equipment. So it, according to this, if that second parameter is two, yeah, so it should be two, right? If you're wearing leather armor, it should be at least a bonus of two, but it appears to be zero. So let's confirm again, the initial conditions are in fact zero. Armor bonus by default is zero with wearing leather armor. So we'll get our person out and we'll say, the person armor bonus should 
equal zero. And we'll rerun this test. The armor bonus by default is zero wearing leather armor. So you and I know that doesn't make sense because leather armor is two, but we've exposed a bug. So we haven't touched the code, we're just reading it. We're writing a unit test to confirm what we know, that the person is in fact created. It, it appears to have some broken logic around armor. Put a, instead of the word bug, let's put fix me. Should be two by default using leather armor. Fix is to not reset armor bonus to zero. Let's confirm that, shall we? So this test should break if we comment this out, right? It should be two. So let's see if it actually works. And by the way, so you don't get a lot of noise. We'll just put a dot only. And what this tells Mocha is to only run this unit test. So if you could have thousands of unit tests, and if you put this dot only, Mocha will only run this unit test. So we're gonna run NPM test. And lo and behold, it is now two, even though we told it to be zero. That's wonderful. We've confirmed that it is in fact a bug. Undo the bug fix. We know the bug fix is there. We know it works. If we ruin our unit test, we're good to go. We've confirmed it is in fact zero. Let's get rid of the only. So we, we can tell the client with, or the developer who's asking for help, that the person always works. However, the initial armor is busted, mainly because of this armor bonus. By adding two lines to get a function to show us the variable and then expose that function so we can call it at a later point from our unit test, peer inside, right, not to modify any of the source code, and just say, look, when you run the code, this is the initial conditions. I haven't touched anything. I haven't called any functions. I haven't set any variables. I haven't loaded any modules beyond actually recording the unit test. And we've exposed bugs strictly by writing two tests, doing some recon, actually reading the code and taking our time, breathing. It may be intimidating, but just starting from one class and working our way there. We're going to keep going on this code. We're going to keep refactoring. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. My name is Jesse Warden. Love to help you. Later.